In this module we're going to look at uh, synthesizing a long forward position using options. The way we do this, a synthetic long position in the underlying, we take a long call position, which is often referred to as plus C. So we go longer call and we sell a put, often referred to as minus P. So long call, short put, that will synthesize a long position. It actually synthesizes a long forward position, or if you like, a geared position in the underlying. So um, it has to be the same underlying, has to be the same strike price for these two options and the same expiration. So uh, the default assumption is that these options are exactly the same. Um, and that is um, it's a requirement of this strategy to work is that they're exactly the same in terms of uh, their details. The only difference is they're a call or a put. If you think about the discussion that we had in the last module, when we were talking about our option payoffs, let's draw that diagram again, the diamond. There's your long calls. Long calls win as the underlying goes up above the strike. So don't forget the axis here is the underlying. Long calls win as the underlying goes above the strike. Why? Because you get to pay X for something that's worth more than X. Of course, um, short calls will do this, the mirror image. Long puts will win as we go below the strike because you get to sell at the strike, something that's worth less. And um, short puts are a mirror image. So there's your options diamond that we saw in the last module. You've got your longs on the top here, shorts are on the bottom, All right? calls alphabetically on the left, and then puts. There are your four option payoffs. Okay, it's very important to kind of have access to these when you're thinking about these option strategies. This is our first option strategy. And what we've done here is we've gone long a call. So we've gone um, long this one. Well, we've got that payoff from being long a call. We win as the underlying goes above the strike. But we've also sold a put. There's a short put position. And as you can see, don't forget, you know, the, um, the implied structure of these payoffs is that um, the vertical axis is P and L. All right, the net profits. So um, when you sell a put on the bottom right corner here, you lose as the underlying goes down. All right, so we're going to see this coming through in the slide. The underlying, if it goes up above the strike, we win. But the underlying, if it goes down below the strike, we lose. That's what's happening when you're going plus C minus P. Okay. So um, what does that mean for us? You know, at the end, if they've got the same strike, these two options, we can only be above the strike or below the strike. Okay, if we're above the strike, the call is paying out. If we're below the strike, the put that you've sold is paying out, so you're losing. Okay, so um, only one of the options can be in the money. If we're above the strike, the call is in the money. All right, that's why we're winning. And the put is out the money. All right, if we're below the strike, then the call is out the money and the put is in the money. We sold the put, that's why we're losing, okay? Really what we've generated here when we take these two positions and put them together with the same strike, we've generated something that wins when the underlying goes up, when S is greater than the strike, and we've generated something that loses as the underlying goes down. Of course, this is a synthetic long position. Okay, this is a very important point. Um, you can kind of picture what's going on. If I picked those payoff diagrams up, let's do that. Let's pick those payoff diagrams up. There's your long call and give them the same strike. There's your long call with a strike that is here, all right, on this kind of dotted line. Here's your short put. I'll make it a slightly different color so we can see. I'm just putting them together now, putting it together, slightly different color. Here's your short put, okay. So now you can see under the blue call we win when the underlying goes up. Don't forget the underlying is the horizontal axis here. So when S goes up, yeah, the call pushes us up. That's great. When, but when the underlying goes down, the put drags us down. That's not so great. Well, that red line is a synthetic long position. And don't forget what that red line is. That red line is a long call. That's plus C and a short put, okay? That's the orange-ish minus P. So the big takeaway here is that you synthesize a long position. 
You synthesize a geared position in the, long, um, in the underlying, i.e. a forward contract, that's a geared position in the underlying. You synthesize that by taking a long call position and a short position, short put position. Okay? A synthetic long here, it's a synthetic long forward position um, or a geared position in the underlying. Two different ways of, of referring to it. All right, so just putting a bit of color on it there, but generally speaking, putting some numbers in, have a look at this, uh, a long 50 call, there's your strike, all right, and a short 50 put, same strike, same expiry, same underlying. What you know here is you're gonna have to pay for the call, all right, don't forget it's long call, short put. You have to pay for the call, that's gonna cost 626. You're going to receive the put premium in because you're selling it, all right? So your net premium, always worthwhile calculating very early on in this strategy analysis for any strategy. Your net initial cost is 626 out for the call, minus 387 in for the put, that's $2.39. Now, if the underlying is above 52.39, on the upside because that reflects the net payment that you've made for this option position and the strike that you have to pay. So you're going to have to pay the strike. It's an important point. If the underlying goes up, you will exercise your call and you will pay the strike at 50. If the underlying goes down, the holder of the put, not you, but the holder of the put will exercise their right to sell at 50 and you will pay 50 for the asset. So no matter what happens here, you're going to pay 50 for the asset, either by exercising your call if it goes up or being put to at 50 by your counterparty that you sold the put to if it goes down. Now given you paid $2.39 for the privilege of having this long call short put position, this $52.39, uh, when you add those two up, this is your break even, okay? Uh, the underlying needs to go up above $52.39 in order for you to be making money out of this position. And needs to, if it goes down below 52.39, you're spending more than what your portfolio is worth. Okay, so that's the break even here. Maximum profit is unlimited because on the upside, there's no ceiling on how far up the underlying asset could go. The maximum loss is really this break even of 52.39. Or is it? Well, this analysis is simplifying things somewhat. All right, this analysis is actually ignoring the time value of money. And what do I mean by that? Well, some of these payments are happening right now, like the call premium, the put premium, they're happening actually right now. And some, you know, and the underlying asset price um, right now is obviously right now as well. But we don't pay strikes until we get to expiry. So there is actually a time value of money adjustment that needs to be done here in order to make this a nice, neat, compact relationship. Let me just go back to this very important point. Plus C minus P synthesizes a long position. What it synthesizes is a, a geared position in uh, the underlying asset. So um, that's what it's synthesizing. You can call it a long forward if you wish, or you could call it an explicitly geared position in the underlying, because of course a forward position is a geared position in the underlying. Okay, so um, what we know is that C minus P is a synthetic long. Wins when the underlying goes up, loses when the underlying goes down. We know that. Um, but it is a synthetic geared. In other words, um, it's a leveraged. It's used some sort of borrowing, either implicitly through a forward contract or maybe even explicitly by just borrowing money to fund a position in the underlying. In fact, if we remove this gearing, what we'd have to do on the left-hand side of this equation, for this geared portfolio, C minus P, long call, short put, to remove the gearing, what we've got to do is fund the strike price that we know we're going to have to pay at expiry. When we get to expiry, if the underlying's going up, it's gone up, then we exercise our call and we have to pay the strike. But that's at expiry, it's not now. Okay, and similarly, if the underlying goes down, we've said this, if the underlying goes down, we get put to at X, so we have to pay X for the underlying. So if we put the present value of the strike price on deposit today in a risk-free asset, you know, just think deposit, then or, or risk-free bond, okay, then um, that will actually be a long position in the underlying S. Okay? So think of this as depositing cash 
or buying a bond to remove the gearing of the synthetic long position. And once you've removed that gearing, you've just got a long position in the underlying. You've got an ungeared position in the underlying. Now, it doesn't take too long to rearrange this equation to write it like this. And that's being, that, you know, that is a very intuitive relationship as well. This here is a geared position in the underlying, a levered position in the underlying, all right? And this here is also a geared position in the underlying because the negative present value of x, you can think of that as a borrowing, all right? That's like a borrowing or like issuing a bond. Now this probably looks familiar to you, right? Because you've seen it, this is the third level in a row you've seen it. That is put called parity, isn't it? C minus P equals S minus the present value of X, all right? That is put called parity. And we've just got there by looking at C minus P and just gently thinking, well, that's geared. Let's remove the gearing to get a true position, an ungeared position in the underlying, and suddenly rearranging it, there's put called parity. Something that we've seen, um, well, this is the third time we've seen it. So it's our old friend, an old friend of ours, is saying um, exactly the relationship, is talking exactly about the relationship that we just derived. If you go longer call and shorter put, that is the same as taking a geared position in the underlying asset, the underlying stock, all right? The gearing that you use is the present value of the strike price of the options. These two things we've just seen are equal to each other. They produce identical values, regardless of what the stock price is at expiration. And it's a very important fundamental relationship. Like I say, you've seen this. Um, this is the third time you've seen this. There it is. Call minus put is the underlying minus the present value of x. Um, you can express it in different ways. So if you rearrange that equation, you could say s plus p, which is uh, a protective put, isn't it? That is having the underlying asset and buying a put to protect yourself against falls in the underlying asset. That must be the same as holding a call and having the present value of the strike um, on deposit. That is a, uh, that's what's referred to as a fiduciary call. So we have seen this before. Um, this is an old friend of ours. Welcome back, put call parity. The last thing we're going to do here is we're just going to talk about uh, put call forward parity. Well, let's actually, let's use put call parity first. Let's have a look at an example. In our example, don't forget C minus P was 626 minus 387, which gave us a net investment at the outset of $2.39. We're going to need some more parameters here for, um, for present valuing. We're going to need to know the risk-free rate, so let's say that that's 3%. We're also going to need to know what the underlying stock is. So I'll tell you now that the underlying stock is $52.14. Okay. We're also going to need to know what the expire of the option is. Um, let's say that the expire of the option is 61 days. So given that, we're going to check that put call parity holds, given these figures. So uh, let's have a look. This is the left-hand side of the equation, isn't it? Remember, put call parity is C minus P is equal to S minus the present value of X. That's the left-hand side of the equation. So what about the right-hand side of the equation? What does that look like? Well, here comes the present value of the strike. Present value of X is going to be X, $50, divided, discounted by 1 plus R, there's 1 plus R, to the power of 61 over 365 days. So no day count convention here, folks, to worry about that we see in, in interest rate markets. You know, just take the number of days, divide by 365 to get a fraction of a year. Now that turns out to be 49.75, that's the present value of X. And then what we need to do is subtract 49.75 from the underlying asset price, which I mentioned earlier is $52.14. And yes, reassuringly, we get the right-hand side of the equation being equal to the left-hand side of the equation. So put call parity does hold here. Now, you might remember from your basics uh, in forward pricing from previous levels, you might remember that we can relate the forward price on the asset to the spot price of the asset with no other benefits of cost of benefits or costs of carry outside of the cost of financing the asset. In an efficient market, you might remember 
that the futures value or the forward value struck today for delivery time t, that is calculated as just the future value of the current spot price. In other words, S0, what we need to do is compound that forward by 1 plus r to the power of t. Um, we're not going to get into the, the, the details of the pricing relationship here, but you know this is the basic cost of carry argument. If you want to defer your delivery of something, then you need to pay for somebody else to go out and buy the asset, and you need to pay for their costs of funding that position. It's the most basic form of uh, futures pricing relationship, futures or forward pricing relationship. Well, looking at this, we can always rearrange this quite neatly and say, that means that in equilibrium, in other words, when markets are efficient and they're priced correctly, S0 could be viewed as um, the futures price, or the forward price, divided by 1 plus r to the power of t. Um, of course, I'll just write that. Let's just write that neatly as the present value of f, the present value of the forward price. OK, well, if S in an efficient market is the present value of the forward price, you know, without no other costs or benefits of carry, that's the simplifying assumption here, then our put call parity of C minus P equals S minus the present value of X, well, that becomes C minus P equals S becomes the present value of F, and that's it, minus the present value of X. And so what we need to do to adjust this equation to get put call forward parity. So this is a relationship which links the fair forward price to the underlying options and the strike price common to those options and um, reflects and respects the time value of money. Okay, so that's module two of reading 15. In summary, okay, we might have gone into a little bit of more detail here than you might expect. Um, but the key thing to take away here is that when you go long a call and you sell a put, you take a synthetic long position. You can view that synthetic long as an implicitly geared forward contract, um, or you can view that synthetic long as a geared position in the underlying. That's going to be very important for later modules um, that you take away from this module that C minus P is a synthetic long position.